there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. <laughs> Shine, sir? Yes, indeed. A bright, sunny day is the perfect time for a shine. It is indeed a most beautiful summer day. Yes, sirree. A clear sky with only a few fluffy white clouds. The kind of day you know things are going to go just the way they should. What? I've been hit by a snowball. A snowball? But, sir, that is impossible. A snowball, I tell you. I know a snowball when I feel one. But we must be logical, sir. We know that on a bright summer day, it could never snow. Oh, no? Snow in the summer? What could it mean? The answer lay in the diabolical laboratory of Simon Barr Sinister. <laughs> it works. My snow gun works. Yeah, boss. But what good is a snow gun? <laughs> Watch, Cad, and you shall see. Watch that postman as he approaches. Simon says, go snow. <laughs> A snowman. You turned him into a snowman. Exactly. And the entire city shall do as Simon says, or I shall turn everyone into snowmen and snowwomen. Gee. Come, Cad. We must go out and demonstrate the power of my new weapon. <laughs> Hello, this is Sweet Polly Purebred, your television news reporter. What can I do for you? What's that? You just saw a snowman in the summertime? I'll be right out. My, what a wonderful story. I hope they aren't snowing me. Snow in the summertime. That could make an interesting news story. I'd better run up and tell Sweet Polly. <laughs> Are you... are you hurt, Sweet Polly? No, thank goodness. I was hurrying to bring you a news story about... I haven't time now, Shoeshine. Someone just reported seeing a snowman out in Eastwood. First, I was hit by snow, and now Sweet Polly says someone has seen a snowman. All on a hot summer day. This looks like a job for... Underdog. Snow in the summer? I wonder why. I'd better go up and search the sky. While Underdog was going sky high, Simon Bar Sinister was arriving at the Two Cent Savings Bank. Simon says, hands up. Give me all your money. You can't get away with this. The police will catch you, you thief. <laughs> you are only the first. All the city will do, as Simon says, or be turned into snowmen and snowwomen. <laughs> then you'll have to answer to Underdog. 
Oh, and not even underdog can withstand my snow gun. <laughs> I'll snow everyone. <laughs> can Simon Bar Sinister really snow the entire city? Will even underdog be helpless against Simon's snow gun? There's plenty of excitement ahead in our next episode. No others near. Colonel, he vows these two soon disappear. Fighting the army blue soldiers galore. What can two Indians do? Go, 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 first watch and go, go, go. Go, 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 first watch and go, go, go. Here comes the Colonel with his sergeant. Both are roaring and a charging. Go, 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 first watch and go, go, go. Go, 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 first watch and go, go. How did it happen, Colonel? They surrounded me, Sergeant. <laughs> the entire Gopher tribe surrounded me. But begging the Colonel for there's only two of them. A sneak attack. <laughs> but this time they've gone too far. Tomorrow, we're attacking those Indians in full force. The men are all ready for tomorrow's attack, Colonel. Bully, bully. We'll teach those gopher Indians a thing or two. We, uh, uh, what's this? Totem pole, Colonel, just found it outside the gate. Hmm, there's a note on it. It says, a present from your gopher Indian friends. Ha uh ha, -huh. they've heard about our planned attack and already they're begging for mercy. Gee, Colonel, I don't know, maybe. Wait over there, man, beside the well. After tomorrow's attack, it will be uh, <laughs> something to remember those Indians by. But that night, as the fort slept, Something strange happened to the totem pole. We got them all army rifles. Where we hide them, ruffled feather. <laughs> hide them in Colonel's closet. Oopie doopie. That'd be fun. Stolen all our rifles. That's right, Colonel. But if the guards saw no one enter the fort and no one leave, then the rifles must be inside somewhere. I'll get my boots and find those rifles immediately. By golly, Colonel, you sure found those rifles fast, all right. Oh, I'm injured, Sergeant. We'll, we'll have to postpone the attack until tomorrow morning. But again, as night came to the Colonel's fort, All uniforms. Where we hide them. Egg, deep, 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 deep. Hide in where? Who beats me? Sarge reporting, sir. You're out of uniform, Sergeant. Yes, we all are. Looks like somebody stole all our uniforms, Colonel. Well, look for them, Sergeant. Uh huh. There's the trail. A shirt, <whistles> pants, a hat, the well. Sergeant, I think I have them. Sure threw yourself into the search, Colonel. I'll have the men put on these uniforms. Men, I have decided to postpone our attack until tomorrow uh, due to uh, certain alterations that must be made in our uniform. But once again, as night came on... Army ammunition, cannonballs, and dynamite. Where we hide them? Oh, the plan. Oopie doopie, you got them fine plan. <whistles> uh, now we hook wire to feather and close door. Then wake up Colonel for big surprise. Sergeant, they're here. Those gopher Indians are in this fort. Sounded like the yelling came from over here, Colonel. Huh? Huh? Sergeant, 
This explains everything. This totem pole must be hollow. And that's where those Indians have been hiding. But they can't fool Colonel Kit Coyote. Watch them yell when I pull this feather. Well, I reckon we just got to put off that attack. Y'all be sure and watch our next adventure. It'll be explosive, too. the time I caught the world's biggest fish? No, but... Uh, I was sailing around the world alone in my two-masted yawl. And heave to in mid-ocean for a bit of fishing. On my first cast, I got a strike. A big one. I pulled mightily on the line, thinking to haul the monster into the boat. But found to my amazement that I had hauled the boat into the fish. Well, there I was, locked in the cradle of the deep, so to speak. But I quickly took down the two masts of my boat and lashed them into one long pole. I knew that soon the monster would become sleepy and yawn. When he did, I rushed forward and jammed the double pole between his jaws. I then got back in my boat and rowed out. Fastening a line to the fish, I towed it along behind, intending to mount it as a trophy when I ended my travels, of course. Where is it? I must see that fish. Well, unfortunately, the rowing made me so hungry, I ate it. Commander, that story is out of this world. Quite. <laughs> Sinister Simon Bar Sinister had invented a diabolical new weapon, a snow gun. And now he was demonstrating its power by holding up a bank. Simon says, give me all your money. Guards, guards, stop him. Simon says, go snow. Oh, no, he's turned them into snowmen. I must reach the burglar alarm. Simon says, go snow. <laughs> and now, all this lovely money. And this is only the beginning. A cry for help comes from below, so hip, 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 and down I go. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Oh, Underdog, thank goodness you've come. Simon Bar Sinister has robbed the bank, and he turned the guards and the bank president into snowmen. It's true they seem to be snowmen now, but if Simon did it, pray tell how. With a new weapon, a snow gun. And that explains the summer snow. Now tell me, which way did Simon go? That way! That way! That way. Underdog took off in all directions. Simon was entering a palatial mansion where a dance party was going on. Simon says, go snow. Simon says, go snow. Simon says, go snow. 
<laughs> now, all of you who are not snowbound, give me your money and jewels. Give them to me, or I shall turn you all into snowmen and snowwomen. This should prove the power of my snow gun, Cad. After this, we can return to the laboratory. Meanwhile, Sweet Polly Purebred had just arrived where the first snowman had been reported. It is a snowman in the middle of summer. I wonder if the people who live here can tell me anything. Little did Sweet Polly know that this was actually the laboratory of the fiendish Simon Bar Sinister. No one seems to answer. Perhaps they're asleep. Hello? Anyone home? Oh, my, what a spooky-looking old house. This looks like the laboratory of some mad scientist. Here yeah, come, Cad. We have work to do. Yes, Cad. Now I shall be ruler of the world. With my snow gun, no one can stop me. Everyone shall do as Simon says, or I shall turn everyone into snowmen and snow... Ah. Simon says, come out, come out, whoever you are. Simon Bar Sinister, you beast, you fiend. Sweet Polly Purebred, what could be more perfect? You shall be my most beautiful snow woman. <laughs> Is this the end for Sweet Polly Purebred? Will she really be snowed? There's spine-tingling action ahead in our next episode.